Hey, what's going on? Jason Cutter here, Cutter Consulting Group, back with another reaction video. This time, I'm going to be looking at this clip from The Office. Uh, let's dive in. I'm going to give some feedback. I'm going to give my ideas, my thoughts, uh, my experiences, both from a leadership perspective, a sales perspective, hopefully help you get some value from this, maybe change the way you do sales or the way you lead a team. Uh, this clip's got a bit of both. Uh, it's painful. It's uh, cringe worthy, if I can say that word. Uh, it's definitely full of a lot of value. So let's dive in this scene from the office. And so, as we're going to see here, as I hit play, they're going to role play in the office to help uh, improve the person who's supposed to be in sales. Here's going to happen I am going to have to fix you, manage you to on a more personal scale. So right away, you know, we've got him coming in here and saying, I've got to fix you and help you be more successful. So many managers look at it from that approach and think you're not doing it right. I got to fix you, especially in the mode of you're not doing it the way I would do it. You're not doing it the way that I have done it in the past. So I have to fix you. If you feel like you have to fix somebody that's in sales, you either hired them wrong, you trained them wrong, or you honestly think that everyone should be doing it like you, which is not the way that it works. Humans are not all going to be the same and not everyone is going to do and say the exact same things you do. If you have to do this and be this brutal about it, like that's a hiring or that's a training or a leadership issue uh, right off the bat. And we're like, I don't know, five seconds into this clip. A, a more micro form of management. Jim and nobody likes being micromanaged. If you feel like you're having to micromanage and control things, again, it's because you think there's a certain way it should be done and you don't have people on your team that you trust or you've hired correctly or you've trained correctly or you feel like you can empower and let them do what you have them on the team to do. If you're micromanaging your salespeople or any team, I promise you probably have very low morale and you probably have really high turnover because you're just trying to do it like it's always been done in sales, which is, I want you to do it this way or else. What is that called? micro -German. Boom, yes. Now Jim is going to be the client. Dwight, you are going to have to sell to him without being aggressive, hostile, or difficult. Let's go. All right, fine. <clears throat> And I love this setup. Like you're going to have to sell to him without these list of things, which leads me to believe like, how does he normally sell? What is he normally doing? And why? Why is it just now coming in this role play session? <clears throat> bring, bring. Hello? And, and I'm just going to point this out. Role playing is... On one end, it can be very brutal and very awkward because you're trying to role play. You're trying to have this scenario. The pressure's on. People are staring at you. Uh, and on the other side, it can be really helpful and effective. The downside is, is that it's never like the real thing. It's not like a real customer who's going to throw things at you and just put you on, on live fire. So it's like this, it's like performing on stage, but it's not really the best environment. Uh, it's also tough here because obviously, as you can tell from this clip, it's a phone sales job. So he's trying to call him to try to sell him, but they're doing it in person and face to face. So it really makes it a misrepresentation. It's really awkward to try to pretend I'm calling you to sell you while I'm staring at you. And it's really going to throw off your game. One thing I learned from the time that I spent working with the military and the way they operate and everything I learned from them and my coworkers who were in the military is that their big thing is they practice like they fight, right? Like they do everything they can to practice and simulate what it's like in a real battle situation and uh, real bullets, real everything as much as possible. Because if you pretend and you practice in a pretend mode when it's real, you're not really prepared. So if you're role playing, if you're leading your team, if it's a phone sales job, have it be over the phone, not people staring at each other because that's just going to be awkward. If it's in person, have people in person going through their sales pitch and get them used to what it's like in the real sales mode. Hello, this is Dwight Schrute from the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Wow, that's great because I need paper. Excellent, then you are in luck because we are having a limited time offer only on everything. Wow, this is my lucky day. Ask him his name. <laughs> I'm just going to point out so gross, uh, you know, a limited time offer on everything. Uh, you know, obviously this is for a show, but there's so many salespeople that approach us like, Hey, we have everything and it's on sale and it's great and you should want it. What is your name, sir? I am Bill Butlicker. Really? That's your real name. <laughs> so 
It's so funny and I laugh and I've got to pause it right here and mention anyone who's done sales for any length of time knows what it's like when you call somebody or have to call somebody and they have an awkward name. It just happens. It's not anyone's fault. Nobody chose their name, especially their last name. It's what they were given. But sometimes you come across somebody where it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's your real name. Uh, I can't believe you live with that. And Again, not to be mean or judgmental, but you, what you have to do is always make sure as a sales professional that you're keeping it professional, right? That you're focusing on the person and not being childish or immature. Or And, and, and what I'm going to say is that goes for off of the phone calls as well because I've been around enough call centers and enough salespeople where they might act one way on the phone and as soon as they hang up, they're acting a different way or talking about people differently or picking on people or, or making fun of people and their names or the accent or whatever it might be. And that's where, like from my side, like you want to be authentic. You truly be you because people can tell even if you're not making fun of them to their face or over the phone, they can pick up that. We can all sense that. Um, and you really want to focus on just being consistent, right? Like, like treating people the way that you would want to be treated on the phone or off the phone. But it is, it is awkward sometimes when this happens and how do you handle it? And, you know, just, just roll with it. How dare you? My family built this country, by the way. Be respectful, Dwight, please. Uh, uh, yes, Michael. Could you hold on one second? That's my other one. What? No, but I, hello? So it's so funny because in this role play, this is what exactly what happens in the real world. Salespeople who think they're the most important in that moment, trying to make a sale, feeling the pressure, have their quota, have their boss listening in or watching, or they just know they have to hit their numbers so they need to make more money. And that prospect doesn't care. They weren't expecting the phone call. They've got other things going on. Salespeople sometimes think they have an unlimited amount of time and prospects, customers will show you the alternative, which is, you don't control them. They are the one in charge. And at any moment, they could put you on hold and then you're just stuck listening to hold music or yourself. And you don't know if they're going to come back on. They might disappear completely. Who knows? Stupid salesman. He's so dumb. Probably just going to keep him on the line forever. And, not buy and this anything. is so funny. Obviously, this isn't a role play scenario and they're in the same office and, and the, um, uh, salesperson Dwight can hear what he's saying and he's just bad mouthing him and, and doing all this stuff. But like, literally that's the kind of stuff that happens behind the scenes as well. Like it's so frustrating and challenging, you know, every once in a while, there's that awkward moment where somebody puts you on hold or thinks they do, but they don't. And then they switch over. Like it happens in the movies that happens as well. I know it's happened to salespeople. I know who thought they put someone on hold or mute and then start saying some stuff, usually something negative. They weren't on hold or mute because potential customer hears it super awkward like in the dv shows and literally that person's gone because they heard that salesperson bad mouthing them or talking about what they were going to charge them or whatever it was and it's just the kiss of death okay it's up to you to change his mind sorry that was a family emergency oh no what's wrong you know what that's private boundaries dwight it's such a tough spot right it's so awkward when somebody shares something like that like uh you know is everyone okay you never know. Like, that's such a tough one. How do you be empathetic if somebody wants to resist you or somebody's thinking you're a salesperson, which you are, and you're asking because you care, but you don't really care. And they're already defensive and trying to battle you because they don't necessarily want to be sold. And they're worried that you might, you're going to get this kind of response. And then how do you handle it? It's so tough when you try to, to do that in a rapport sense, or even when you ask somebody how they're doing, like I, I said in the last video I did about a clip from the Boiler Room movie, is that when you ask that kind of thing, or you do what he just did, you're opening yourself up for a really difficult challenge, a really hard fight, because now this person is going to throw something at you it's really hard to recover from. Never been lower. Louder, I, son. But liquor. Our prices have never been lower. Stop it. Heat. <laughs> so obviously this role play in this scenario in this scene is set up for this point, right? But I see so many people in sales who think they're in charge and think they want to have their way and they're trying to make their sale and maybe they're coming at it from their own self-centered approach and really start getting hostile and aggressive and uh, sometimes yelling or getting upset. I've seen and heard salespeople use the kind of lines that 
don't ever work, right? When someone says, hey, I'm not interested, salesperson says, what are you not interested in? Saving money? What are you not interested in? Fill in the blank. And it's just this combative thing. You got to always remember, right? If you are a professional, you're going to handle it like a professional and you're going to be the one in charge moving forward and to not take it personal. There's a balance between it's business. It's not personal. It's personal. It's not business. You want to not take it personal. It's business, right? If someone's upset, if someone's aggressive, if someone's arguing with you and you're in the sales process, that's not about you unless you're doing it wrong. Like in this mode here, where obviously he's starting to get aggressive. But if that's not you, if you're not being aggressive, if you're not being difficult, if you're not yelling, then it's really not about you. That other person is the one who's reacting and maybe they had a bad day, obviously maybe an issue in the family, whatever that might be behind the scenes, it's not about you, it's about them. Hello, Mr. Butlicker, how may we help you? Michael, I like the sound of your voice. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy $1 million worth of paper products today. So any salesperson who's been around for a while and any manager who's been around for a while knows this exact scenario. Sales rep, not getting anywhere. Either the potential customer doesn't like them, they're not vibing, maybe they're aggressive, maybe it's just not working, maybe the prospective customer just doesn't trust the salesperson. There's just something that's off, right? Something that's missing, something they didn't do that they weren't effective or it's just them, right? Some people, you know, you just they just rub you the wrong way. Manager gets on, takes over the call. Instantly, done deal. It's the bane of so many salespeople out there where they're struggling, they can't get information, they can't get someone to move forward. Manager says, hey, let me give it a shot. Person gets on the phone. Manager gets on the phone. Hey, okay, I'm the manager. Oh, okay. And then obviously they're more effective. It's a better fit. Doesn't happen all the time. Happens enough that it drives salespeople crazy. Absolutely crazy. Obviously, it'll get the deal done, but the salesperson will sit there going, was it me? What's up with that? Why can you do it and I can't? If it helps, the manager's also thinking the same thing. I could do it. This was easy. Why can't you do it? Kind of going back to the beginning of this, which is where he needs to fix him. <laughs> See how it's done? Thank you very much, sir. I don't think you'll regret it. You, know I did? you are the master. There is one condition, Michael. Yes. You have to fire the salesman that treated me so terribly. Don't do it, Michael. I love it. And what's great about that is, you know, sometimes customers will say some kind of thing. I don't ever want to talk to that person again, or make sure you set me up with somebody else or whatever this might be. Obviously, they would never say, hey, fire that person. But so many things from this clip, hopefully you took that, especially if you're a manager or a leader, you can kind of see what that's like when you're doing these role play, what that scenario is. If you're in sales, hopefully you took some things from this where you can use this. You can build a better sales process, have better conversations, build rapport for the right reason. Watch out for some of those traps that happen uh, that you know were in this clip.